welcome to Film My Run. It is a Sunday morning on the 4th of October 2020 and it is time for the London Marathon, the virtual London Marathon. Uh, I'm not going to film a lot uh, but I am going to do it on the seafront uh, running up and down a 10 kilometer out and back, well five kilometers out, five kilometers back. And we're going to do that four times and add a little bit more and uh, my hope is to get it done in well certainly under four hours 3 30 if i'm feeling up for it there are already a few people running up and down the seafront i can see uh, so uh, let's give this a go need to load up the london marathon app and because uh, that's how they're tracking the run oh, don't get knocked over and um and so we'll see how we go so uh, I will check in as the run progresses, but not very often because I just want to get this done. And it is going to be a bit wet and rainy today, as you can see, it's a bit miserable on the seafront here. Uh, but it's not raining yet, so fingers crossed we'll be all right. Okay, let me just set myself up and I'll go. Okay, I've got the app on my phone um, and it's giving me commentary in my ear. Uh, I've just realised it's really windy going this way, going out. Uh, so I think 3.30 might be difficult in the wind, but we'll try. Uh, so I'm about to start. I'll start the watch now. In fact, I've got two watches going. Um, and away we go. So London Marathon 2020, we have started. <laughs> Okay, I admit it, I'm an idiot. So that is the last audio that you will hear from my 2020 uh, Virgin Virtual London Marathon run. Um, from then on, there's no sound. Why? I don't know. It was working when I turned it on. It was working for the first two clips. And then after that, it's just a mush of static. And I'm not even going to play it to you. So all we're going to do now is we're going to go through the video and you can see clips of me talking to the camera uh, but not hearing any sound from the clip. Uh, I'll just overdub, you know, what's going on, if that's all right with you. So at this point, I'm five kilometres into the run. I've run all the way up Worthing Seafront and I'm just about at the turn point. Uh, what I've discovered is that the pace I'm going is really difficult into the wind. The wind is really strong, pushing me back, um, and I'm finding it really tough. And I'm worried because it's only the first five kilometres. I've got a whole 37 more kilometres to go. And I'm thinking, if I've got to run into the wind every five kilometres, it's going to absolutely wreck me. So at this point, I'm actually really quite worried about the whole run um, and whether I can get through it or not uh, and what to do about that to make it better. So here I am coming to the end of 10K. So I've gone 5K out, I've come 5K back with the wind behind me and there I am turning around to go back up for my second time into the wind. Uh, I felt a lot better, obviously, running with the wind behind me coming back down, um, and that did give me a thought. Um, I thought, well, if I'll, I'll run one more time up into the wind, uh, but I knew it was really slowing my pace down. Obviously, I was trying to get around about three hours, 30 minutes, and I knew that if I kept forcing into the wind, it was just really going to hurt. I, I don't like to be hurt, so I thought... Why don't I just do this one more time up into the wind? Then when we turn around at the top, I will just run straight all the way along the seafront as far as I need to go to get to 26.2 miles with the wind behind me. Uh, so that was the plan. And I, I just, this was my last go into the wind now, thankfully. Okay, so here we are 15 kilometers in now. I've done my last bit of running into the wind. I'm turning around and heading back down with the wind behind me and now I know I'm going all the way to Brighton, all the way along the seafront pretty much uh, with the wind behind me. So starting to feel a lot more positive about the run. Also 15k in, not feeling too bad at all, sticking to pace just about. 
Um, hadn't had any food or drink as yet. My plan was to meet my wife um, in 5K from now, uh, just for her to give me a drink, uh, and then I would carry on from there. Um, also, it's quite nice because uh, you notice I've got my headphones on there, and every mile I was linked up to the uh, the Virgin Money London Marathon app. And every mile, uh, Steve Cram or um, Paula Radcliffe would give you an audio commentary. So that was quite good. One thing I, I don't know why, but one thing I hadn't been quite so prepared for was the number of people out running with their Virgin Money London Marathon bibs on. Um, I thought, oh, I'm not going to wear mine. But loads of people were wearing them and it was really nice to see. And I kind of half wished I had worn mine in the end. So here I am now at 21 kilometers into the race, halfway in a time of one hour, 44 minutes, 30 odd seconds. So that is bang on for a 3.30 finish. Uh, so I was starting to feel a lot more confident about the run. I'd done 10K into the wind and now I had the wind behind me all the way to the finish. So I was starting to think maybe I can do this. Um, I'd just seen my wife at 20 kilometers for my first pit stop. It uh, didn't take a lot, really, just a few sweets, a few Skittles sweets to put in my pocket. Um, a drink of kind of lukewarm tea quickly down. And I took with me, you just saw me flash it up to the camera there, a bottle of Purdy's uh, fruit, carbonated fruit drink. Um, I kind of like it a bit better than Coke or Red Bull. So here's Matt and David doing their virtual London marathon. And we're just heading into Shoreham now. And we get to the bridge, and here's the bridge at 16 miles done. That's 26 kilometers, 10 miles of the London Marathon to go. Uh, and I was at 2.09, I think, here, two hours and nine minutes, still on course then for three hours 30. This, though, is a pretty rough section of road. Um, when I say rough, I mean it in lots of ways. Uh, the road itself is not very well maintained, so uh, you've got rough. Uh, path to run on uh, but then also it's it's not a pleasant area to run through so it's a bit grim uh, before you get to the outskirts of, of Hove and Brighton uh, so this was the only bit really which kind of you had to grind through and get done as it were right here we are at Shoreham Harbour you can see the power station behind uh, Brighton Marathon runners have to run all the way out to that power station and it's a pretty grim run uh, so we're at 30 kilometres here now, 12 kilometres to go, 2 hours 26, so still well on course. One thing I had noticed though was that the um, London Marathon app, uh, the miles seem to be ticking over a bit quicker than my watch. Uh, and that obviously that's down to GPS running on a phone app, which is not ideal. Uh, still, I was going to follow my watch, whatever happened. Two hours 37 minutes in and I hit 20 miles, just six miles to go. This is Hove Lagoon here. Uh, so if you're running the Brighton Marathon or the Brighton Half Marathon, you've got three miles to go to the finish on Madeira Drive. So I had a little bit further to go, uh, but it's basically all the way along Brighton and Hove seafront from here. Uh, still getting those mile um, updates a little bit early from uh, the London Marathon app, uh, but I wasn't worried about that. The wind was nice and strong behind me, um, and now I was into a place where there were lots of other London Marathon runners out on the course as well, uh, so it was nice to be able to cheer those people along. So we are now right on Hove Seafront. Uh, if you've ever done Hove Park Run before, that's the course. Uh, really nice wide open promenade uh, running towards Brighton Pier with seven kilometers to go. So I hit 35 kilometers in two hours and 56 minutes. Uh, and I was now thinking, okay, could I possibly get under 325? Still feeling good, I hadn't hit a wall. Um, no more nutrition on board, maybe, oh yeah, <laughs> I dropped all my sweets. So I took a load of Skittles sweets from my wife at 20K and then managed to try and pull them out of my pocket and almost all of them fell on the floor. So I had about four to eat, uh, which was a little bit annoying, but never mind. Uh, yeah, but still feeling strong. 
and uh, pushing it now to try and get under three hours 25 minutes. Uh, these two runners sped past me at one point and then I saw them coming back. Uh, they were on for a 3.15 uh, London Marathon. And uh, now we're on Madeira Drive. If you know uh, the Brighton Marathon or the Brighton Half Marathon, this is the finish line of, uh, of those races. Uh, I'm at 37 kilometers in three hours. So do the maths. Uh, basically, I needed to do five minutes per kilometer from here to the end in order to do a sub three hours, 25 minutes. Uh, so this was gonna take me all the way out now uh, to Brighton Marina. Okay, so here I am finally arriving at Brighton Marina. This is 40 kilometers into the race in three hours, 14 minutes. I know I'm gonna do my goal time of three hours, 30, but I'm pushing it just that little bit harder now to try and make it under three hours, 25 minutes. Uh, the app is telling me I'm nearly finished, by the way, here. A uh, few more obstacles to overcome on this path, and also it's raining harder. The wind is harder on my back, so that's good. Um, also, though, I wasn't quite sure where to go because from here, there is a way onto a coast path, so you run under the cliffs, uh, but I didn't quite know. I couldn't quite remember how to get there, so I was basically just running blind, hoping I could see the path at some point. So just to show that uh, I was running this race more than filming it, obviously you've noticed the camera work has been terrible throughout and there's no audio, uh, which proves that I wasn't really concentrating on filming. I was concentrating on trying to run. Uh, but then I completely forgot to film me at the end of the run. I don't know why. I was just concentrating so much on trying to get to the end in under three hours, 25. And it was close, according to my watch, Three hours, 24 minutes and 50 seconds, uh, 49 seconds or something. So it, so it was tight to get it in in that time. Although the app told me, the London Marathon app told me I'd finished in three hours, 21, uh, which I, I'm pretty sure I wasn't that quick. Uh, so then I climbed some steps. I'd run along the bottom of the cliffs um, out of Brighton Marina. I climbed some steps at the end and here I am uh, talking to the camera at the end of the run. Now I said there was no audio for the entire video and that's true apart from at the beginning which you've heard and this last little bit at the end it just kind of you can vaguely hear what I'm saying so I will play you my outro at the end of my Virgin Money virtual London Marathon video. Uh, so take care from me and, and here's me saying goodbye on the video.